Mary and George, the mother and son duo who teamed up to infiltrate the king's court, using his lust for attractive young men to their advantage. The 2024 miniseries Mary and George is based off of these two, and in this video, I transform their portraits to see how they might have looked in real life, as well as talk about their real stories. If you're new to my channel, welcome! Here on Mortal Faces, I take historic portraits we read about and recreate them to see how they might have looked in real life. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more historic recreations, let me know in the comments who you want to see in real life. The king was completely enamored with George, and nicknamed him Steeny after Saint Stephen, who was said to have had the face of an angel. Let's begin with Mary. Mary was miles away from court, literally in Leicestershire, serving as a waiting woman for one of her relatives. Because you're not exactly a servant, but not a member of the household either, so she was kind of limbo, but super ambitious. So Mary married twice, both to minor gentlemen. Her first husband died, leaving her with debt, and her second husband, who was also her first cousin, Sir George Villiers. She gave birth to three boys and one girl. Of the boys, two of them were duds, so George was the only one with promise. George, on the other hand, was charismatic, good-looking, clever, witty, complicated. He was not particularly intellectual, but he certainly knew how to work a room. So Mary recognized her son had the ability to become a figure of political importance and so saved up to send him to the French court to learn about etiquette, sporting, dancing, and the French language. In other words, she wanted to culture him. Then Elizabeth I died and James VI of Scotland inherited the throne and became James I of England. He had a reputation of eyeing young attractive men and the English court was worried. He was bringing in too many Scottish friends into his court, so this was Mary's opportunity. She essentially thrust her son into the English court upon his return from France, bought him a new wardrobe and turned him into a peacock at the Oscars. He was weaponized to catch the eye of the king. Once the English courtiers saw this young mysterious man enter, they also played the same cards as Mary and wanted to get him to attract the king as well, and he did with spectacular success. James and George met at the estate of Apthorpe, Northamptonshire, during a visit by the king's court in 1614 when George was 22 and he was introduced as a cup bearer to wait upon the king who was 48 and his court. George could dance like the devil, said Woolley. And you can just imagine the king sitting with his then Scottish man mistress, Robert Carr. This attraction got Robert so jealous, a feud began resulting in Robert losing. He and his wife, Frances, then implicated a plot of courtier poisoning, and Carr ended up in the tower. King James had a different flavor to his reign. Unlike Elizabeth, who did not do extensive traveling and held lavish parties, but morally acceptable, James was the opposite. He traveled up and down the country, bringing his retinue and his favorites, while hosting voluptuous parties that were morally challenged. As the new favor to the king, this security raised his mother Mary into the Countess of Buckingham, and George from knight to baron to viscount to earl to marquis and duke and he became the first Duke of Buckingham at 31 years old. To show just how strong Mary had become, she attained so much influence that during the height of Protestantism, which James was trying to stabilize, Mary decided to switch to Roman Catholicism. James tried to dissuade her, but she wouldn't hear about it. And that shows the strength of her character and her standing position. Until James I died in 1625, Buckingham was the king's constant companion and closest advisor, enjoying control of all royal patronage. Buckingham used his influence to enrich his relatives and advance their social positions, which soured public opinion towards him. Outside being pretty, he was Lord Lieutenant of Kent, Middlesex and Buckinghamshire, Lord High Admiral and Master of the Horses, but he wasn't very good at being a leader. Alas, he was the last succession, though, of handsome young favorites on whom the king lavished affection and patronage. In a letter to Buckingham in 1623, the king ended with the salutation, God bless you, my sweet child and wife, and grant that ye may ever be a comfort to you, dear father and husband. Buckingham reciprocated the king's affections, writing back to James. I naturally so loved your person and adore all of your other parts, which are more than ever one man had. 
I desire only to live in the world for your sake, and I will live and die a lover of you. Buckingham himself provides ambiguous evidence, writing to James many years later that he had pondered, whether you loved me now better than at the time which I shall never forget at Farnham, where the bed's head could not be found between the master and his dog. When King James I was dying two years later in 1625, Mary had an argument with a physician over the correct treatment for the dying monarch. Such was her influence that the physician was removed from court, and three years after the king's death, Buckingham was stabbed to death by John Felton in 1628, who felt that he had been overlooked for promotion by the duke. On hearing the news of his death, it was said that the Duke of Buckingham's mother did not seem surprised, but rather it seemed as though she had long expected this news. Mary died four years after her son in 1632, and they are both buried in Westminster Abbey. George was only 35 when he was assassinated, and Mary died when she was 62. To succeed them, George did get married. He had a son, who became the second Duke of Buckingham, but he loved to spend money and died without any heirs, leaving the title to become extinct. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more historical recreations. Each of your subscriptions does help this channel grow. It allows me to continue making more content for you. Let me know in the comments who you want to see next. Did you make a list of all your suggestions? And I will see you in the next one.